QuickBooks Online 2023 Progress Invoicing Example 2 Record Actual Costs for Month Number 2 Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online Test Company file. We started up in a prior presentation, noting that we're in the accounting view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. We're gonna duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it. As it's thinking, I right click on the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle reports on the left hand side we're going to be opening up the balance sheet as that's thinking tab to the right reports on the left even though it was done thinking the, the computer thought really fast like computers do but we're going to go to the profit and loss going to close up the hand buggy change the range and we're going to say this is going to go from 010125 let's go to 06325 and let's see this on a month by month breakout, even though there's not much in it thus far for the first half of 2025. We're gonna go to the tab to the middle, close up the hand boogie. Let's do this one from 010125 to 06325 and hit the drop down. We wanna see this on a classes breakout. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it class by class and run it and there we have it okay so now i'm going to go to the first tab we want to go down to the projects and I'm going to look at project number two. That's where our focus is. Remembering that in the past, we started the project and we made an estimate and then we got a down payment. I'd first like to see this in Excel. So now we're going to have actual kind of uh, the job taking place costs for the job. And I'd like to do that first in Excel where it's more transparent and then we'll put it into the QuickBooks system. So here's in essence what we did to calculate the estimate. This is basically our billing structure based on the estimate. And now we're going to have actual time passing and actual expenses taking place. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make it a little bit wide. I want to put some, some columns between F and G. So I'm going to put my cursor on column G. I'm going to select on over, I don't know, like K that's about right. And then right click and we want to insert. So now we've got all these skinny columns. I want to widen out those columns. So I'm going to select from column E to column J, not including that K because I want that to be a skinny. And then I'm going to make these like the same width by just adjusting like this one. So now they're all the same width. Let's make them a little smaller right about there. Eh, eh, that's about right. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to say this is going to be the actual, actual job progress i think we can fit it, fit it down at the bottom here without a big issue and so i'm going to say this is going to be black and white on the header home tab font group black white and let's say we're going to say that we actually start work on month number two i'm just going to say equals month number two and then we we're actually going to finish it out on month five so we so two to five we're going to finish this thing out and then then let's think about the actual costs so the actual costs uh let's bring this out a bit we could say break it out between uh materials and labor and overhead head and then the total so i'll try to break it out like that and so let's go ahead and black and white this and center it as our headers and make this a little bit wider so you can see a space between these two headers. 
And so I'm just going to kind of make up some numbers now for the actual expenses that are going to take place for month number two. And then we'll continue filling out this table uh, as time passes. So we're going to say, all right, we had month number two materials. Let's say the materials were 7,000. And let's say the labor is, is uh, seven, 3,000. And let's say the overhead is going to be then uh, 3018. And I'm going to sum this up equals the sum of there's the 1318 is the total. Okay, so now uh, I have my actual costs and we can use those actual costs to try to figure how complete the job is. And that's typically what we might do in like a revenue recognition concept if we have a longer term type of job to recognize the revenue based on how complete the job is. So for example, I could compare this number to the, the, uh, the actual revenue to, I'm sorry, to the actual costs that we project, which is the 76,923 to see how complete the job is at this point in time. So I could say this is gonna be this divided by the total cost. I'm gonna make that a percent home tab, uh, number group percentifying it. And I can add a couple depth decimals and I'm gonna call this the percent complete percent complete home tab font group black and white let's make this a little bit wider for the percent complete i can add some more decimals then why not do that if it's wider like that so percent complete and then so the revenue revenue let's say revenue record recognize or the revenue that we should recognize i'm going to pull all of this down so i can have a header right there i'm going to say just grab this and pull it down and i'm going to grab this and pull it down revenue to recognize or something like that is what i'm trying to say if i spelled it wrong that's not unusual for me because i spell stuff wrong sometimes you may have noticed that's just because the spelling's wrong. My spelling's right. The way that people say it should be spelled is wrong. So in any case, then we could say then the revenue that we should recognize if the, the total revenue uh, is gonna be 100,000 times the 16,922 so on percent would be the 16,923 and so on. So we'll get into this component of it later but if you think about this in the next presentation to actually record this but if you think about this and you're saying okay well if i'm trying to recognize revenue as we go well then i can say this is what we actually spent so there's where we stand at this point in time i'm have a percent completion based on the total expenses to compare to what i think the total expenses will be at the end of the job that's my percent complete and I can multiply that times the revenue that I'm gonna be receiving to think about where we should stand with regards to total revenue at this point in time is the general idea. So we're just gonna record this right now and we'll think about recording the revenue recognition component uh, in a following presentation. All right, so home tab, font group, let's put some borders around this. Now, if I record this with just a journal entry in our little worksheet over here, I can just say this happened on 228 and we're going to say that we had, I'm just going to put it all into cost of goods sold because all of this is going to be part of the thing that we're making, right? The, the job that we're doing. Cost of goods sold. The other side is going to go, I'm going to say to cash, checking account, assuming we paid for the labor overhead and materials. In practice, of course, we would have multiple things that we paid for materials. Or we'd have payroll or contractors that were paying for the work. And then we'd have, you know, overhead things that we're going to assign to it. But I'm not, I don't want to get into too much detail. I want to focus on the progress invoicing and the time recognition thing. So we're going to say this equals the actual total here. And there's the debit and credit. If I post this, we're going to say this equals the debit. And this up here, 
I'm going to say F2 on the keyboard, F2 plus, F2, so I can scroll back down. Check-in goes down, we're negative on the check-in, so that's not good. We're overdrawn, we better collect on this soon, but that's where we stand. Let's do the similar kind of process over here in, uh, in, in the QuickBooks software, realizing, noting that I put the cost of goods sold, actually recognizing the cost of goods sold, and then we'll recognize the revenue uh, in a future presentation for that time period. Okay, let's go back on over and let's say that we're in our projects now in QuickBooks in our project number two, where we left off last time. And I'm just gonna say we have an expense form and it's gonna be for project number two. Actually, it's going to the a vendor that we're paying. I'm making generic vendor here. And we're gonna go through this and say, this was, I uh, happened on 022825 and project two. So it's pulling over the, the data from the last, uh, from, a, from a prior expense form. I'm gonna delete this stuff and put in a whole new thing so we could see it being put in place. So I'm gonna say that we have materials that we set up the item for in a prior presentation. And I'm gonna put the materials on the books for what we said, we said, 7,000 on the materials. So, all right, 7,000 materials. I'm gonna actually make it billable because I would like to pull the materials now over to the revenue recognition, which I'm gonna report on an invoice. So, so I'm, and I'm actually not gonna give that invoice externally. This is gonna be for my internal revenue recognition and I'm gonna make it 30% markup. That's gonna be the standard markup that, that I'm gonna be using. now. Let me, before I record this, I'm gonna delete this and just remind us that I turned on the billable items by going to the cog up top and accounting and taxes. And then I'm gonna to go to the expenses here and I'm gonna to go to uh, the bills and expenses. And we have this, I think uh, they currently have it on by default. I don't even think I turned it on this time. It used to be off by default and you had to turn it on if you wanted to but I think it might've been on by default. But in any case, you wanna have this on. And then I've added the markup of the 30% because that's gonna be our markup. We're gonna have our costs and then a 30% markup is gonna be our standard markup. That's just the way our billing processes I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna, that'll populate automatically if I put that in place here. And then I want it, the track billable expense items uh, as income. That's generally the default that we would want, but we're, act, we're gonna be applying uh, we're going to be using items in conjunction, so that'll be that'll uh, adjust it a little, and then charge sales tax. I'm not going to charge the sales tax, so we're going to say okay, keep it there, and then we're going to go back on over. Let's do it again. Boom, S expense form. This is going to be random vendor number one, date 022825. I'm going to delete the stuff down here so I can re-enter it. It's gonna be materials, materials. We set up an item for it last time. And I'm gonna say once again, this was 7,000, I think, 7,000. Billable, 30% markup. Uh, so the sales estimate comes up to that. And then we're gonna say the class is gonna be class number two, okay? And then we have labor, which I think was 3,000 also billable and there's the markup this is going to be class number two and so then we've got the overhead which came out to some random number of 1318 so 13018 billable comes up to that so there's the total of the 2318 which seems high let me check it out again okay paso seven three three eighteen uh seven three this should be three three oh one eight not one three okay there's the thirteen eighteen so there's the thirteen eighteen and that sixteen nine twenty three is going to be the revenue that we recognize so if i pull out the trusty calculator and we go back on over here. I can see that that's going to be what's going to pull into the invoice from this item. 
which will be 9100 plus 3900 plus 3923.4. There's that 16, that 16923. So that looks good. We'll do that next time. But that link is something that's going to be kind of, going to be important for our revenue recognition kind of recording. If you don't you do it that way. Anyways, so let's what's this going to do? It's going to reduce the cash account. And the other side is going to is going to be going into the cost of goods sold driven by the items that we set up. We didn't use the categories. We use those items that are going to cost of goods sold. So let's save it and close it and check it out so now we have an ex a cost to get sold in our project that showed up this is basically the project is kind of like an income statement showing us the income statement performance accounts and then if i go to the balance sheet now we've got the checking account so if i go into the checking account it's going down for the expense form that we put in place scrolling back up and back to our report income statement is the other side if i run the income statement then notice that I've got the expense, which is happening now uh, in February. And that's the time frame that we actually paid for the stuff. So we're kind of, and hopefully that's the point that we're kind of consuming it. We're saying, we're thinking uh, in order to, to make the, whatever we're doing in the long project, and then we're going to match up the revenue. I'd like the revenue to match up in the same month, right? So if this was my cost, I'd like this revenue to match up uh, in the same month, which is what we'll do uh, next time. We can also see if we saw the profit and loss, by the way, for the whole year, 010125 to 123125, and I break this out by classes. Now you can see our income statement job reports that are basically redundant to the classes, but you get a nice job by job this way by using the classes and then you get a and then you get a, a, a total uh, for all of it which is which is quite useful and if you assign everything in cost of goods sold to a class it also gives you this non-specified item which is great because that tells you it didn't get assigned to a class so let's go into that I'm gonna say there's a problem here that didn't get assigned to a class I'm gonna go into that and say class to fix it then fix it it's broken it's broken so now i'm going to say all right let's go back on over and run it so so now we've just everything's in class one uh or class two for our two jobs which is a little bit different than our report over here because if i look at my my project reports i usually see a profitability you know just for one job or i can look at a project report this way duplicate tab and go to reports on the left hand side and project project profitability summary from 010125 to 123125 and run it running so you get this nice little breakout but it doesn't give you the all of the full detail so this is kind of nice but you get this nice breakout here and then if you use the classes you also get some of the balance sheet accounts if i run the balance sheet accounts for the full year 010125 to 123125 i could see some not the checking account but the billings account is breaking out by class and that can be useful because i would like to see what's in the billings account on per job you know, and, I, and so I can see that either this way or I can actually go into that billings account and I can sort this area by customer and that'll break it out. If I had more than one uh, activity in the billings account here, it would break it out by billings and I can see the subtotals this way as well. So, so there's a couple different ways we can find the same information, but I think that redundancy is actually useful. Okay. That's enough. Next time we're going to go into the recognizing of the revenue for that for this month.